Hello, how are you? As time goes by, a person with Alzheimer's may have other medical problems, just like anyone else. These ailments can cause more confusion and behavioral changes, especially if they are not able to say what is wrong. That is why we have prepared this information. Fever is defined as a temperature 2 degrees Celsius above normal. This can be a sign of infection, dehydration, sunstroke, or even constipation, more on the latter later. To confirm the measurement, avoid glass thermometers, if you still have them, because he or she can bite it in a careless moment, and cut or poison himself or herself with mercury. Use a digital one instead. These diseases are easily transmitted from one person to another and people with Alzheimer's disease are more at risk. It is therefore highly recommended that the person receives a flu vaccination every year, and a pneumonia vaccination at least once after the age of 65. If, despite these precautions, we notice that the person has a fever, chills, aches and pains, vomiting, coughing or breathing problems, we may be dealing with a case of influenza or pneumonia, in which case we should seek medical advice. As the disease progresses, the person may find it increasingly difficult to walk or maintain balance. Their sense of depth and perception may be altered, affecting their ability to judge distances. For example, a person with Alzheimer's may try to step down from a carpet as if there were a step. In this channel, we have discussed how to prevent falls. Let us recall here the most important points. Keep things tidy, i.e. clear the passageways of obstacles. Remove carpets, prefer chairs with arms, install grab bars in the bathroom, but the real ones, well anchored to the wall, use good lighting, and have the person wear shoes that fit well, and provide good grip. We need a certain amount of water to function well. If a person is ill or does not feel thirsty, which is often the case in older people, they will not drink enough fluid, and may become dehydrated. There are some signs that this is the case, such as dry mouth, dizziness, hallucinations, in addition to those that Alzheimer's itself can cause, or tachycardia. It is therefore important to be aware of how much fluid the person drinks, especially when it is very hot, such as in summer, if there is no air conditioning, or in winter, if the heating is very high and dries out the environment. Difficulty in passing stools, constipation, may occur when you change your diet, you take certain medications, exercising less than usual, drinking less fluids than usual. A good way to counteract this tendency is to encourage the person to drink about six glasses of fluid a day. This can be water or juice, plum juice is best, jelly, soup, melted milk or ice cream, and of course coffee or tea, decaffeinated is best. As for food, foods rich in fiber, such as dried apricots, sultanas, prunes and whole grain cereals, are good. Exercise also plays a role, even if it is just walking. Some medicines, including those for Alzheimer's disease, can cause diarrhea. In these cases, the priority is to make the person drink plenty of fluids, between one and a half and two liters a day, and in small quantities, in sips, water, rice or carrot water with a little salt, isotonic drinks, or water with lemon. On the other hand, milk should be eliminated from the diet, and irritating condiments such as pepper, paprika or vinegar should be restricted. On the other hand, it may be a good idea to increase the number of meals per day from 3 to 5 or 6, reducing the quantities proportionally. Bladder or bowel incontinence can occur at any stage of the disease, but is more likely in the more advanced stages. It is a matter of informing your doctor, as sometimes the cause of the problem can be treated. These are treatable causes. A urinary tract infection, a hypertrophic prostate, diabetes that is not being treated. If the person takes a lot of diuretics, or other medicines that make it difficult to hold urine. If you drink a lot of caffeine. So expect a lot of questions from your doctor to guide your treatment. Answers to the following questions will probably have to be prepared. What medications do you take? Does the person leak urine when laughing? 
coughing or lifting. Does the person urinate frequently? Can he or she get to the toilet in time? Does the person urinate outside the toilet? Does he, she stain his, her clothes or sheets every night? Do these problems happen every day or from time to time? For these cases, some people find it helpful to keep a record of food and fluid intake and how often they go to the toilet. Regardless of the treatment you choose, there are things that we as caregivers can do to deal with incontinence, such as remind the person to go to the toilet every two to three hours, show them how to get to the toilet or accompany them, wear loose, comfortable clothing that is easy to remove, limiting fluids after 6 p.m., do not give caffeinated fluids, such as coffee or tea. If the person is thirsty before bedtime, fresh fruit is preferable to liquids. Mark the bathroom door with a large sign that says, toilet or bathroom. Use a special toilet seat that is stable and at an appropriate height. If it is colorful, it will help the person identify the toilet. If going out of the house, it may be necessary to go into an individual cubicle in a public toilet with the person, or into someone else's toilet. And if incontinence is more severe, this may need to be considered. Purchasing disposable underwear or pants for adults, waterproof bed and mattress protectors. Purchasing a drainable sanitary bag for people who can no longer control bowel contents. It is to be expected that the person will not articulate that something hurts. There is no choice but to look closely at the person's face to see if they are showing signs of pain or that they are not feeling well. Another clue may come from sudden changes in behavior, such as shouting or hitting. If in doubt, consult a doctor and ask for help. Check the mouth for sores, cavities, food debris, or lumps, and take the person for dental checkups. Some people need medication to calm down before going to the dentist. Some of the circulatory problems of the heart and blood, stroke and diabetes are more common in people with Alzheimer's than in the general population. Diseases caused by infections are also common. It is important for the person with Alzheimer's to receive regular medical care. Here are some suggestions for preparing for a doctor's visit. If possible, it is best to choose an appointment during the best time of day for the person and when the health center is not too crowded. If the person is nervous about doctor's visits, it is best to withhold that information until the day of the appointment or even just before leaving for the doctor, and give it in a concise and positive way. It may help to bring something you like to eat or drink, or any object you like. A friend or family member who can stay with the person while you talk to the doctor may be helpful. Last but not least, it is a good idea to bring a brief summary of your medical history and a list of all medications you are currently taking. A trip to the emergency room can be very stressful for everyone. Here are some suggestions. Carry a list of medications, the health card, the name of the family doctor, and, if they are made, a copy of the advanced living will, a kind of living will that details the patient's wishes about medical care at the end of life. On these occasions it may be very appropriate for a friend or relative to accompany us and join us in the waiting room. They can stay with the sick person while we answer the staff's questions. We will be asked to explain the symptoms and events that brought us there, and this will probably have to be repeated more than once to different members of staff. It is best to be prepared and be patient. And if the person with Alzheimer's has to stay in hospital, don't leave them alone. It goes without saying, doesn't it? Anyway, I hope you found this information useful. Thank you very much, and see you next time.